Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Let's create a man stack project and learn a lot of topics together. If you don't know what is man stack, I just released a fast overview of man. You can find its link in video description. Make sure to check that video. So, what is the plan? We are going to create a basic bookstore project. We use man stack, so we will have MongoDB, Express.js, React, and .js. Just some little tips before I start. You must know JavaScript and basic React for this tutorial. I try to explain everything as simple as possible. But if you don't have experience with JavaScript development and basic React, I think this tutorial may be a little hard for you. All codes are available on my GitHub. You can find the link on video description. This is a MERN tutorial and my focus would be primarily on this stack. So I don't pay attention to other technologies that can be irrelevant for you in this level like Redux, React Query, React Hook 4, JWT and others. If you're interested in each one, let me know and we will have it in another tutorial. What do you need for this tutorial? First, you need to have Node.js installed on your computer. Then, you need a code editor and a browser. I use VS Code and Chrome, but you can use anything you want. Now, let's go and start coding. First, create a new folder with name of bookstore, man stack. Then, open it in VS Code. Here, create two separate folders for backend and frontend projects. Also, I created .gitignore file and also a readme.md file for the GitHub repo. You can ignore this. Now, let's initialize our project. Make sure that you are on the backend folder, else type cd backend to go to backend folder. Then type npm init-y and press enter. This command will add a package.json to our project. And inside of this package.json file, let's add a new line with the type of module. This line will allow us to use ECMAScript syntax, which is import keyword and export keyword. Also, let's add two packages to our project, Express.js and Nodemon. So, let's type npm i express Nodemon. We use Express as our framework and also we use Nodemon for restarting server automatically on chains. Now, let's add two scripts to a script section. A start will run the project with Node.js environment and dev will run the project with Nodemon and we use this command in development. No, let's create a new file with name of index.js. This file will be the starter of our project. We need Express.js framework, so let's add it here. Then define a new variable for it. Then let's make it listen to a port. It is better solution to separate your codes to different files and folders. So for the port, I want to create another file with name of config.js and I will define my port in this file. A better way to saving this port variable is .n file, but I don't want to add it to this project, so let's use this config.js for this tutorial. Then you need to import this port in index.js file and use it. We need a function for listening to this port. Let's create app.listen function and use our port in it. After port, we can pass a callback function to app.listen. And let's have a simple console.log with a message to be sure that everything is okay. No, let's run our project using VS Code Terminal. Type npm run dev. This command will start the server on our selected port. No, in console, if we see this message, it means that our server is running and we don't have any problem. No, we have a basic server. This server language is JavaScript. It uses Express.js as a backend framework. And you can run this server on any machine with Node.js environment. Let's run it and see the result. First, I check my Node.js environment with this command, node-v. This command must give you the version of installed Node.js. Then I use npm run dev to run my server using Nodeman. Well, we see the success message and it's good. Now let's open our browser and check the result on server port, which is 5555. So we need to go to localhost port 5555. And this message shows cannot get a slash. Let's open developer tools and go to network section. Here you can see network requests. I refresh my page. You can see a request to localhost and it has a status of 404. Let's click on it to see more details. Here we have three sections. Click on general 
Now you can see request URL, request method, status code, and other data. A status code of 404 means that we don't have the requested URL. For each URL, we need to have an HTTP route. The default HTTP route of this server is a slash. And you can see the message of cannot get a slash. So let's make it. In index.js, we use Express Framework to create our HTTP routes. I want to create a new route for a slash route. I use app.get. The get is our HTTP method that generally used for getting a resource from server. We have some other HTTP methods and we will work with them later. The first parameter of get is an string for our route. So let's use a slash. The second parameter is a callback function that handles this request. In this callback function, we receive request and response and we can manage both of them. For example, we can log the request and also we can return any message with our response. Also, we can send an HTTP status code, for example, let's send 234 with any message you want. And now let's check the browser again. Well, we have our message and also our status code is 234. Now, let's add a MongoDB database to our project. You can use a local database or an online database. In this tutorial, I want to use a free online database. Let's open mongodb.com website and in this website click on the sign in button. Here you can sign up if you don't have any account. I already created an account here so I choose Google Authentication to sign in. Here click build the database. In first row we see the options. I choose free M0 plan. I don't change provider and region. It is not important in this tutorial. Next, I choose a name for my database, like Books Store Map. Tag is optional, so I don't use it, and I click Create. Here, we choose the authentication with username and password. I use a simple route for username and a route for password, but don't forget to always have a strong password for your database. And this is a local project. I don't add any IP for this database. Then, click Finish and Close. Here you can see list of your databases. Let's click on connect button to get connection stream. Here click on drivers. And here on first section select the last version of Node.js. On the third section copy this connection stream. We need to use it on our server. So let's go to config.js and create a new variable for it and paste it here. And you need to add your password here. And also you can choose a collection name so here let's add a books collection. Please create a free database for yourself. This database will be deleted after tutorial. Now let's go to index.js and use it. I import it from config.js. And for working with MongoDB database, we need Mongoose library. Let's install it using npm i mongoose. Then import it into our file. We can use mongoose.connect to connect to database and add a URL as a parameter to it. Then we can have dot then dot catch structure to handle different situations of success and failure. On catch, I simply receive the error and log it to the console. And on then, first I log a success message to console. Also, I want my express server to run only if database connection is successful. So, I simply cut my app.listen method and paste it inside of this block. Now, let's run our server by npm run dev and check the console. If we see two success messages, it means that we are okay and both database and server are running. Now, we have MongoDB database and Mongoose library. Mongoose is a popular object data modeling library for MongoDB. It allows us to interact with MongoDB easily with JavaScript commands. Let's have a quick look at mongoosejs.com. Here, we see a simple example of using Mongoose. In this example, we want to save a cat to database. We need a model for cat, and this cat must have a schema, for example, a name with type of a string. Then, we use that model to interact with database. Let's copy this cat model and go to our project and create our book model. Creating a model in index.js is not a good idea. It is better to always have a folder structure. Let's create a new folder named models. In this folder, we keep all our project models. First, I paste the cat model here. I change its name to book. 
Then I use export keyword so that I can use it in another file. For a schema, this book just has a name, but what if you want to have other fields? The better approach is to create the schema outside and use it here. We have a schema method of Mongoose that can help us. So let's create a book schema variable and it equals to mongoose.schema and inside of that we can have an object of fields and each object can have some options. First I want title with type of string and I want it to be required so I use required true. Let's copy paste it and have an author again with type string and required of true. Again paste and have a publisher field. This field has type of number and this is it. We don't need ID because ID will be handled automatically by database and you will see this. We can have some other fields for timestamps like time of creation and time of last update. In order to having them after fields object, let's have another object and add timestamps true. And that's it. Now let's use this book schema for our model. The book model is now ready to use. Well, now we have a book model and it's time to create our first book. First, let's import book model from its folder. For creating and saving a new book, we need a new HTTP route with type of post. Post method usually is used to create a new resource. Then, let's use express app and create app.post. The first parameter is route, so I use a slash books. The second parameter is a callback function. This function receives request and response and handle them. Because working with Mongoose is an asynchronous process, we can use async keyword for our callback function. I also use a try catch block for handling success and failure. In catch block, I simply receive the error. Then I log that error to the server console. Then I return a response with a status of 500 and I send an object with error message. In try block, first let's have a quick validation for our input which comes from request.body. So, I check all of required fields to be in request.body and if they are not, I return a response with a status of 400 and I send a message for client. Then, let's create a variable for new book and use our request body for title, author and publisher. Then, let's call book.create and send this new book to it and save the result to a book variable. And finally, I return a status code of 201 and send the book to the client. Now, let's start project with npm run dev and test it. For testing a post method, we cannot use browser. So, I use Postman. It is a good tool for working with web APIs. To create a new book with Postman, let's open a new request. First, choose HTTP method which is post. Then, paste your URL here. My URL is a slash book, so it would be HTTP localhost your port a slash books. Then, we need to send the body to our route. Let's choose raw here and here choose JSON and then send your data as a JSON to our server. I use some test data and then I click send button. Well, we have an error because the body is not recognizing our server. So let's go back to the index.js again and add a middleware for parsing our request body. We can use express.json and it will allow the express to use JSON body. Now let's go back to postman and test again. I send my data again and this time you can see that book is created and I have the status of 201 and the created book. Also in this book you can see that I have underline ID and timestamps. Well, we created a book and it saved on database successfully. Now let's create a new route to get all books from database. We use app.get because this is a get method. The route of this method is again a slash books but it is different from previous route. That was a post method and this is a get method and they are different. Again, let's have an async callback function to handle our request. And on catch, I receive the error, log it to the server console, and then I return a response with a status of 500 and the error message. Then in try block, I use book.find and pass it an empty object to get list of all books from database and save it in a books variable. Then we can return a status of 200 and send books to the client. Let's go to the postman and check it. So let's create a new request and choose get for our method and type the URL. I use the previous URL with a slash books and then click the send button to see the result. Then we receive the list of books as an array and the status is 200. That's good, but let's have a better output for this route. So 
I want to have a shape for this output. Let's go back to its rows and instead of sending just a box, let's create a new object. And in this object, I want to send two values. A count, that would be books.length, and the data, that would be our books. Now, let's go back to Postman and test it again. And that's it. You can see that now I have a better structure for my data. We created an HTTP route for getting all books. But let's say we want to have another route to see details of a single book. As another example, if you have a list of products, you may want to show the product details to the client. You can send the ID of that product to the server and ask for the details. Let's do this. Because this method is like to get all books, I simply copy and paste this method and edit it. Well, this method is for getting one book from database by ID. The method is again get, but in route, we need to receive an ID. In order to tag and parameter in routes, we use colon. So the route would be books slash colon ID. And we need this ID to search in database. So let's destructure it from request.params. Then use book.find by ID and send this ID. And the name of return will be book. And we return this book to the client. Now let's check it in Postman. Let's create a new request and use get for its method. The first part of URL is same as the books list. But we need an ID. So let's copy an ID from the books list and paste it in the URL and then send our request. Well, it is working and we received the requested book. Now it's time to update a book. Well, update is a little tricky because we need both request.params and request.body. In fact, we need an ID param to find the book in the database. Then we need request.body to update it. So let's implement it. We need a new route for update a book. This time we need to use app.put because we use put method to update a resource. So the route must be a slash books a slash colon id. And we have an async callback function with a try catch again. In catch, we receive the error and first log it to the server console. Then return a response with a status of 500 and error message. In try block, First, let's have a validation. We check title, author, and publisher, and if one of them are missing, we return a response with a status of 400 and a message. Then we destructure the ID from request.params. This time, I don't create a new variable like HTTP POST method of create a book. I use book.findById and update and pass ID as first parameter and request.body as second parameter, and I save the result in a variable. Then we can check the result. If the result is false, we return a status of 404 with a message. Else, we return a status of 200 with a message. You can use any message you want. Now, let's go to the postman and test it. I create a new request. The request method is put. The URL is book slash ID. So, let's copy one book ID. Then, we need body. We previously sent a body on creating a book, so now you are familiar with it. I put some random data here and then I press send. And if we see our success message, it means that everything works fine. And we can simply go and check that book to see if it is updated or not. And also, let's test an invalid ID and check the result again. So with invalid ID, we will receive 404 with its message. Now let's delete a book. For deleting a book, we just need its ID and we don't need body. So let's implement it. We need a new route for deleting a book. For method, we use app.delete. Delete method is the standard HTTP method to delete a resource. For route, we use a slash books a slash colon ID. Again, we have an async callback function and then try catch blocks. In catch, we receive the error first. I log it to the server console, then I return a response with a status of 500 and error message. Now let's go to the try block. I destructure the ID from request.params, then I use book.find by ID and delete and pass book ID to it, and I save the result in a variable name result. Then I check the result. If the result is false, I return a status of 404 with an error message. Else, I return a status of 200 with a success message. You can use any message as you wish. 
Now let's go to the postman and test our new HTTP route. I must create a new request. The request method is delete. The URL is again like the update. So let's copy one book ID and use it here. And I don't need body, so I simply click send to see the result. And if we see our success message, it means that everything works fine and our book deleted successfully. Well, we created our HTTP routes. Now, let's refactor them to have a better application. Our application is okay, but what if we have more than one model? Let's say we have eight models, and for each model, we need five routes. Then, we must create 40 HTTP routes in index.js. Is it good? No, this is not a good solution. We always try to use code splitting and folder structures like what we did for our models. In this situation, we can use Express Router. Let's do this. First, let's cut all of our HTTP routes that handle books. Then, we must create a new folder named Routes. Inside that, we created a file for each model. Let's create Books Route for now. And I paste the HTTP routes and minimize them all to see them better in this file. We need Express Router, so let's import Express from Express. Then I define a variable named Router to be Express.Router. Then instead of app, we can use this router. So let's change all of the apps with Router. And finally, I export this router as a default export. Also, we are using book model, so let's import book in this file. And next step is to use them in index.js as a middleware. So let's go to index.js and import book routes from its routes. Then we use a middleware for a slash books and we can pass books route to it. This will say express that for each request with prefix of books, handle them with this middleware. And because of this, we must change our routes. So let's go back to books route again. Here, the slash books are redundant and we don't need them. So let's delete them to be able to work with our middleware. Now let's go to Postman and check our server again. I send a request to get books list and you can see that everything is working and they are okay. So our refactor is working correctly. Well, we refactored our server and it is working fine. We tested our HTTP routes with Postman and they are working. Now, let's talk about one of the most important topics in web development, course policy. In order to have a better understanding of it, first let's see it in a real-world example on Postman and React project. In Postman, I send a request to the server and I receive the response without any problem. That's good. Now, let's check it in a React project. I created a simple React project and here you can see that I'm sending a simple request to our server to get the list of books and then log it on the server console. Let's go to the browser and check it. Here, I open developer tools and console tab, then I refresh my page to see a new request. Now you can see this error. Access to XML HTTP request at this address from origin of localhost 3000 has been blocked by course policy. No access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. Well, this is the course policy error. Course stands for cross-origin resource sharing. Course is a security mechanism in web browsers that restricts the ability of a web page to make requests to a different domain. In fact, course policy is a web security mechanism that prevents unauthorized cross-origin access to a resource or a server. When a web page makes a request to a different domain, the browser sends a request to the target server. The server will check that whether the request is permitted or not. Server can check origins, methods, and headers and allow or deny the request. And this is what happened in our React example. But how we can fix it? Well, it is too easy in Node.js. Let's go back to our server and handle course policy. To handle course error, we need to install a new package. Let's open our terminal and type npm i course. After that, I import course in index.js and it must be used as a middleware. We have two different options to use it. First, we can use just course with parentheses in this way, we have a default value of a star that allows everything. Now, let's go back to browser and test it. I refresh my page and wait for the result, and you can see that I am receiving a response from server without any error. 
Good. Let's go back to server and test another option. Second option is to allow custom origins. This is a better way because we have more control over it. For this, we can use an object in course. In this object, we can use origin, methods, and allowed headers. So, for origin, we can use HTTP localhost 3000. For methods, we can use get, post, put, and delete. For allowed headers, we can use content type. And that's it. Now, only the clients with this origin can access our server. Let's go back to browser and check it again. Well, again, we have access to our server without any course error. Well, we created our server. Now it's time to create our front-end project with React. There are different solutions to create a new React project. A lot of tutorials use CRA or Create React app package and it is not bad. But we have a better solution, WIT. WIT is a build tool that works better than CRA. Let's use it and create a new React project using the S code terminal. First, delete this front-end folder. It was just for showing that we have another project. Now, make sure that you are on the main folder and type npm create wheat at latest. If you don't have latest version of wheat, it would ask you to install it. Then, you need to type your project name, for example, frontend. Then, select React. Then, select JavaScript. And that's it. Your new React project is ready. Now, change your directory by this command cd frontend. Then type npm i to install npm package. After that, let's add Tailwind CSS to our project. Open Tailwind website and go to get started. Then on framework guide choose Vit. We have done a step 1 already, so let's go to step 2, copy this command and run it in your terminal. npm install dash d Tailwind CSS post CSS auto prefixer. After that, copy the next command and run it. np Tailwind CSS init dash p. This command creates two files for you, tailwind config and postcss config. Then copy this content and paste it in tailwind config. Then copy these three lines, go to index.css and delete everything and paste them. Then delete app.css because we don't need it anymore. Then go to app.jsx and delete everything and create a new component using RAFC. I'm using an extension named ES7 Plus. Let me show you that. This extension allows me to use RAFC to create new components. Now, let's use some Tailwind classes to make sure our codes are fine. For example, BG Red of 400 and Text White. Now, let's run our project using npm run dev to see it. Well, it seems that everything works fine. Now, we have a ready to use React project with Tailwind CSS. Now, we have our React project. We want to have a single page application or SPA so our application would not be refreshed on page changing. We don't have this functionality in React itself, so we need to install a new package. Let's open terminal and make sure to be on front end project and type npm i react router down. Then we need some configuration for it. Let's go to main.jsx. Here we need to import from react router down the browser router. Then use it and pass the app components to it as children. That's it. Now we have access to React Router down on all of our project. Now let's go to app.jsx. Here, first import from React Router down two things, routes and route. Then in return section of our component, we return these routes. Inside of it, we can have different routes. For each route, we need path and element. So let's create five rows for five different pages, and I create this page to use them here. Create a new folder in SRC and name it as pages, and inside of that, let's create five different components and use them as our application page. One, create book.jsx. Two, delete book.jsx. Three, edit book.jsx. Four, home.jsx. And five, show book.jsx. That's it. Now let's go back to app.jsx and first we need to import them one by one. So let's import home, create book, show book, edit book, delete book. Now let's use them in our roads. A slash goes to home component. A slash books a slash create goes to create book component. A slash books a slash details a slash colon id goes to show book. A slash books a slash edit a slash colon id goes to edit book 
and slash books slash delete slash colon id goes to delete book and that's it so we test them one by one when we develop these pages now we have all of our routes let's continue i want to use two npm package so let's go to terminal and install them npm i axios react icons we use axios for sending http requests and we use react icons for its icons then let's run our server so type cd backend and then npm run dev then uncomment the default course middleware and comment the second one because our ip is different in this project now let's open a new terminal for our frontend project type cd frontend and then npm run dev before developing our home page i want to create a component for loading state this is a good idea to show our user a spinner when it is a loading state Let's create a new folder called components and create a new file named spinner.jsx and inside of that let's have a division with class names of animate ping, width of 16, height of 16, margin 8, rounded full and bg sky of 600. That's it. Now let's go to home page and implement it. Let's import user state and user effect from react. Then we import axios from axios then import a spinner from its address and then we need a link of React Rotterdam then we need some icons like AI Outline Edit, BS Info Circle, MD Outline Add Box and MD Outline Delete then we want to have two different states so let's create them one state for our books with default value of an empty array then a loading state with default value of false then we need use effect to call our backend I don't talk about user state and user effect because I assume that you are familiar with basic react. Let's create a user effect with an empty dependency array. In that first let's use set loading to true, then call axios.get with our backend road for books list. Then we receive response and set books to response.data.data and then set loading to false. Response.data is the object of our response result and in that we had count and data. So we use this data to save it on our state. On catch block, we receive error and then we log it to the console and then we set loading state to false. Now, let's work on JSX parts. In main division, we use P4 or padding 4. Then, let's have a division with class names of flex, justify between, items of center. Then, let's have an H1 with class names of text 3 x large, margin Y of 8 and text of books list. After this h1, let's have a link to a slash books slash create. And for its label, we use an icon of MD outline at box with classes of text sky 800 and text for x large. After the first division, let's open a curly brace and check if we are on loading state or not. And if it is true, let's render a spinner component. Else, we return a table with classes of width full, border separate, and border spacing too. In that, we must have a T head and a T body. In T head, let's have a T row. And in that, I want to have a TD with classes of border, border slate 600, rounded MD, and text of no. Then, let's have another TH with same classes and text of title. Then, again, another TH with text of author, but with an additional class of max MD hidden. So that this column would be hidden in mobile and tablet sizes. And again, another TH with same classes with title of publisher. Finally, let's have a TH with title of operations, but for this one, I don't use MaxMD of hidden. So we have five columns and two of them would be hidden for lower sizes. Then let's open a curly brace and use books.map with an arrow function. We receive book and index for each item of books array and we return a TR with key of book.underline ID and class name of height 8. First item is a TD with class names of border, border slate 700, rounded MD and text center and for its text we open a curly brace to use index plus 1 because index starts from 0 but we need to start from 1. Then let's have another TD with same classes and text of book title. Then another TD with title of book.author but for this one we use max MD of hidden like the top section. Then let's have another TD with book.publisher and again with maxmd of hidden and finally another TD for our operations. In the final TD I use a division with class names of flex, 
justify center gap x of 4 and in this division i want to have three different links with icons let's create a link to a slash books a slash details a slash book dot underline i i'm using this syntax to create dynamic rows inside this link let's have a bs circle info with classes of text to x large text green 800 then another link to a slash books a slash edit a slash book dot underline id with edit icon and yellow color then final link to a slash books a slash delete a slash book dot underline id with delete icon and red color now let's format our document and then go to our application to see the result first let's test add then let's test book details then let's test book edit then test book delete and you can see that they are all working fine after showing all books in the table we can show one book details in another page before that i want to create a reusable component for my back button i want to have a button to go back to our books list let's create it first in components folder let's create a new file named backbutton.jsx inside of that first import link from react rotterdam then import bs arrow left from react icons we can receive a destination prop here with default value of a slash so if we don't pass it the destination would be a slash road by default for main class i use flex and inside of that let's create a link component to destination and for class names i use bgsky 800 text white padding x of 4 padding y of 1 rounded up lg and width of fit inside the link we can use our icon with class name of text to x large and that's it now i go to show book component first let's close the explorer to have some more space then we need to import use effect and use a state from react then we need axios also we need use params from react rotterdam and also we need back button component and the spinner component in our show book we need book state for handling our book show then i use a loading state to handle the loading time then i destructure id from use params then i use the use effect hook and in that first i set loading to true then we use axios.get with the address of this book with its id then i receive response and i set response and data to book state then i set loading to false and in catch block i receive error and i simply log that error and then i set loading to false in return section i use a padding for class for main div then i use back button and it has default row so we don't need to pass row to it then let's have an h1 with classes of text trix large margin by 4 and value of show book then let's check loading state if it's true we can show a spinner component else we can show a division with classes of flex flex column border 2 border sky 400 rounded x large width of feet and padding of 4 then i want to use a structure and repeat it let's create it i use a division with classes of margin by 4 inside that i use a span with class names of text x large margin right of 4 text ray of 500 and the value of id then i use another span with value of book dot underline id the other parts are copy paste so let's copy it and use title and book dot title then another copy with author and book dot author again another copy with publish year and book dot publish year and next item is create time and new data of book dot created at dot to string and final one is a copy with last update time and new data of book dot updated at dot to string and that's it now let's go to our application and test it and here i test some of my books and you can see that it is working correctly now let's work on creating a new book in createbook.j6 we need to import user state then we need back button a spinner axios and use navigate from react rotterdam there are different solutions for controlling our form data. I simply use three different states for them. So let's use title, author, and publisher. Then I use a loading state. After that, I use navigate equals to use navigate. I need this to navigate to main road after creating our new book. 
Then I create a handle save book function for handling our book create operation. Here, first let's make a new data object with value of title, author, and publisher. Then I set loading to true. Then I use axios.post to slash books and I send data as second parameter. On then block, I simply set loading to false and navigate to slash road. And on catch block, I receive error and I set loading to false. Then show an alert with some text and then log the error to console. Then let's work on JS6. For main div, let's add class name of padding4. Then I add back button component here. Then let's have an h1 with class names of text 3x large, margin y of 4, and value of create book. Then let's check the loading state and if it is true, we show a spinner, else we show an empty string. Then let's have a division with classes of flex, flex column, border 2, border sky 400, rounded x large, width of 600 pixel, padding of 4, and margin x of auto. Then I want to have a structure and repeat it. So let's create a division with class name of margin y4. Inside that, I want to have a label with class names of text x large, margin right of 4, text gray of 500, and value of title. Then let's have an input with type of text, value of title. On change, we receive event and set title to event.target.value. And class names of border 2, border gray 500, Padding x of 4, padding y of 2, vita of full. Then we can simply copy and paste this structure. For label, let's use author, then change the value to author, and change the unchanged to set author. Then let's copy paste the structure again and use publisher for label as well as value. And for unchanged, we use set publisher. Finally, let's have a button with classes of padding 2, bg sky 300, and margin of 8. And on click, we call handle save book function and use save for its label. Now, let's go to our application and test it. Here, let's insert some information for our new book. And after that, we press save and wait for the result. If it is successful, we will be redirected automatically to the home page and we can see our new book here. Now, we can work on edit book. Because the structure of our edit is like create, I go to createbook.js6 and copy everything. Then I go back to edit book and paste all of them instead of current component. Then I change the name of our component to edit book again and I export default edit book. Then let's go to the h1 and change it from create book to edit book. And in edit, we first fetch our book with its ID from backend and we need to use effect and use parent for this purpose. So let's go to the top of our page and import use effect and use params. Then we can simply destructure the ID from use params. Then let's use use effect and inside of it, first set loading to true, then call axios.get with wrote of slash books slash ID. Then we can receive data and set author to response.data.author, set publisher to response.data.publisher, and set title of response.data.title, and then set loading to false. And on catch block, we can simply set loading to false, show an alert with a custom text, and then log the error to the console. Now we have our book data in a state, so we must be able to see it on inputs. Let's go to the application and check it before continue. Well, it seems that it is working, so let's continue. The only change here is the handle save book function. Let's rename this function to handle edit book. Again, we want data and set loading, but for HTTP method, we need put. Also, we need the ID of book, so I use template literals and I add ID after slash books. And the other functionality is the same, so we don't need to change them, but we change the function name. So let's go to the button and on unclick section, change the name to handle edit book. Now let's go to our application and test it. Let's click on edit button of one random book. We need to wait for the loading state and then we can see the book data. Let's edit them to some random data and then click save. The application goes to the loading and after loading, in successful response, we must be redirected to home page and here we must see our updated data. And the final page of our Mernstack project is delete book. So let's work on it. 
In deletebook.js6, we need to import user state, back button, spinner, axios, use navigate, and use param from React Rotterdam. Then let's have a loading state. After that, I use navigate equals to use navigate. Then I destructure ID from use params. Then I create a handle delete book function. Here, first I set loading to true. Then I use axios.delete to slash books slash id of our book. On then block, I simply set loading to false and navigate to slash road. On catch block, I received error and I set loading to false. Then show an alert with some text and then log the error to the console. In return section, for main division, I use class name of padding 4. Then I use back button. After that, I use an h1 tag with classes of text 3x large. Margin via 4 and takes up delete book. Then let's check loading state and if it's true, we return a spinner component, else we return an empty string. Then let's have a division with class names of flex, flex column, item center, border 2, border sky of 400, rounded x large, width of 600 pixel, padding of 8, and margin x of auto. Then let's have an h3 with class name of text 2x large and text up are you sure you want to delete this book then let's have a button with class name of padding 4 which is red of 600 text white margin of 8 and width of full and on click we invoke handle delete book function and for its label use yes delete it and that's it let's go to our application and test it and here we can click on delete button of any book we want in delete page, we can click on the delete button and after successful delete, we must be redirected to home page. And here you can see that the book is deleted. Well, our CRUD application is completed. Now, let's make it more beautiful and elegant. I want to have two different options to show the book's list to viewers, table and cards. We implemented the table, so let's add cards. In first step, let's go to components folder and create a new folder named home. In that, I create two components, bookscard.jsx and bookstable.jsx. First, we need to refactor the table. So let's go to home page and first let's import bookstable and bookscard. Then cut the table tag from this page and go to books table and paste it inside of return section. We need books list, so we receive it from props. Also, we are using link and some icons. So let's copy the link and the icons from home page and paste them here and now it is completed. In order to use it in home page, instead of all table tag, we use this component and we pass books to it. After refactoring the table, we need a state to control the type of show. So let's add a show type state and use a default value of table for it. Then right after the main div, let's create another division with class name of flex, justify center, items of center, and get x of 4. Then I use a button with class name of bgsky300, on hover bgsky of 600, Padding X of 4, padding Y of 1, and rounded up LG. And on click, I set show type to table, and I use table for its text. Then we can copy this button and reuse the classes, and on click, we set show type to card, and I use card for its text. Now we have the functionality of changing the design, and let's go down and change the return after loading. So after loading, we check that if show type equals to table, we return box table. Else, we return books card and we pass books to it. Now, let's check the result until now in the application. After loading, we can see the table and if I choose cards, we can see the cards component. So, let's go and complete it. Here, we need to import link from React Rotterdam. Then, we need to import PI book open text slide and BI user circle and AI outline edit and BS info circle and MD outline delete. Then I receive the books as props. For main division, let's use class names of grid, on SM grid columns of two, on LG grid columns of three, and on XL grid columns of four. So it would be responsive based on the screen size. Then we need to use books.map and receive the item. 
and return division with key of item that underline ID and class names of border 2, border gray of 500, rounded large, padding X of 4, padding Y of 2, margin of 4, relative, and on hover, we have shadow of X large. Instead of that, first let's use an H2 tag with class names of absolute, top 1, right of 2, padding X of 4, padding Y of 1, BG red of 300, and rounded up LG. And for the text, we can use item.publisher. Then, let's have an H4 with class names of margin Y of 2, text gray of 500, and we can use item.underline ID inside of this H4. Then, let's have a division with class name of flex, justify start, align items of center, and gap X of 2. And inside of that, let's use PI book open text light. And for the class names, let's use text red 300 and text of 2X large. Then, we can have an H2 with class name of margin Y of 1, and we use item.title for its label. After that, I want to have another division with class names of flex, justify a start, items of center, and gap X of 2. And I use an icon of BI user circle with class names of text red 300 and text 2 x large. Then I use an H2 with class name of margin Y of 1, and I use item.author for its text. Then I want to have another division for the button. So let's create a new division with class name of flex, justify between, Items of center, gap X of 2, margin top of 4, and padding of 4. Inside of that, I want to have three links. For the first one, I want to have a link to a slash books, a slash details, a slash item.id. And for the icon, I use BS info circle with class names of text to X large, text green of 800, and on hover, I use text black. Then I want to have another link to a slash books, a slash edit, a slash item.id. And I use AI outline edit again with the class names of text to X large, text yellow of 600, and on hover, I want to have text of black. And for the last link, let's use a link to a slash books, a slash delete, a slash item dot underline ID, and use an icon of MD outline delete with class names of text to X large, text red 600, and on hover, we want to have text black. Now, let's go back to our application and test it. And here, after loading, we can choose table and we can see the table view of our books. And also, we can use card and we can see the card view of our books. In previous lesson, we implemented books card component. Now, let's make it better. In this component, we are mapping over the books array and we return a division for each item and we use it as a single book card. But a better approach is to make this division a reusable component so that we can use it in any other component we want and also it is easier to maintain, refactor and also change. So let's cut all of the division inside of the map and in components folder on home, let's create a new component name book single card and paste the division in return section. This is a separate component, so we receive a book object as a prop and we change all of the item usage to book. After that, we need to have the link and the icon, so let's copy all of them from books card and paste them here. No, this is a reusable component and it just need a book prop. Let's go back to books card. Here, first I import the new component, then in map section, I return the book single card component and I pass key of item that underline ID to it. And also I pass a book equals to item prop to it. And that's it. No, it must work. Let's go to the application and test it. Here, after refresh, everything must work fine. And also open the console and check that you don't have any error here in console. Now, let's add another feature to our project. I want to have a model to show some information for each book. In components home, let's create a new file named bookmodel.jsx. And inside of that, first let's import AI outline clone, PI book open text light, and BI user circle from React icons. Then let's define some props. 
So we need book and unclose. We use this book to show some data and we use unclose to close the model. Then for main division, let's use these classes fixed, bg black, bg opacity 60, top of 0, left of 0, right of 0, bottom of 0, z index of 50, flex, justify of center, and items of center. And for unclick, we invoke unclose prop. This is the container of our model. It is a fixed division that would be on the top of everything and we added z index of 50 to be sure about this. Inside of that, let's have another division. For unclick, we receive event and we call event.stop propagation. And for class names, we use width of 600 pixel, maximum width of full, height of 400 pixel, bg of white, rounded of x large, padding of 4, flex, flex column, and position of relative. We use a stop propagation so that with each click, the parent on click would not be invoked. Because we need this model to be closed only in two conditions. First, click outside of the model white area. And second, click on the red close button of the model white area that we will implement soon. Now, we have our model and we can show anything we want. Just for the close button, I use AI outline close icon with class names of absolute, right of 6, top of 6, text of 3x large, text read of 600, and cursor of pointer. And on click, I call on close prop, so this button will close our model. Then, let's copy some of the single book card elements here to show to the viewer. You can choose anything you want. And for the first H2, which is publish here, I delete these classes, absolute, top one, and right two, and I use Vita of fit. And after them, I use two optional paragraphs. You can use them or you can ignore them. And these are just for demonstrations. Now, our model is completed and it's time to use it. Let's go to book single cards. And first we need to import BI show, then we import use state and book model, then we need a new state named show model with default value of false. This state would control the open and close state of our model. Now on links division, let's add a BI show with class names of text three x large, text of blue of eight hundred. On hover, let's have a text of black and a cursor of pointer. And on click, we call set show model with value of true. This is for showing our model. And before the last division of this component, let's open a curly brace to access JavaScript and check if show model is true. Then we render book model and we pass the book to it. And for unclose, we call set show model with value of false. And that's it. Now let's go to the application and check the result. And here for cards view, we can see the icon of model and by clicking it, we can open the model and see the data. And you can see that if I click inside of the white area, the model is still open, but clicking on close button will close the model. Also, clicking outside of model area will also close the model. Well, our bookstore project has full crowd functionality, but we can make it even better. When we alter our database with create, update, or delete, we redirect our user to home page if the operation is successful. But we don't give any feedback and the user can't see any details about the operations and this is not good for our user experience. A good approach is to show a beautiful alert to user. We can use default browser alert, but it is not beautiful. I want to use a npm package named NotiStack. In the NotiStack npm page, you can see how to install and use it. Based on the document, you must wrap app component inside of a stack web provider to have access to the hook context. So let's go to the project and use it. First, we need to have a terminal on frontend directory and we type npm i NotiStack. Then let's go to main.js6 and here we import a snack bar provider from NotiStack. Then we use it so that we have access to it on all of our project. Now let's use it. First, let's go to the createbook.js6 and here on the top section, first we need to import use a snack bar from NotiStack. Then with this structure, include a snack bar from use a snack bar. Then on handle say book function, before navigating to a slash road, we can call it. For example, I can call it as 
in kui snack bar with a message like book created successfully and we can pass some options like variant of success also on catch block we can use another example for example in kui snack bar of error with variant of error and that's it so we show a beautiful alert instead of ugly browser default alert and that's it then let's go to editbook.js6 and do the same first we need to import use snack bar from not a stack then with the structure and query snack bar from use snack bar and then on handle edit book function before navigating to a slash road we can call it as and query snack bar with message of book edited successfully and variant of success and also on catch block we can use and query snack bar with message of error and variant of error and after that i want to use it for deleting a book operation so Let's go to the delete book.js6 and here first we import use a snack bar from not a stack and then with the structure and query a snack bar from use a snack bar and after that on handle delete book function before navigating to a slash row I call it as and query a snack bar of book deleted successfully with variant of success and also I call it on catch block like this and query a snack bar with message of error and variant of error. No, we have beautiful feedback for creating a book, updating a book, and also deleting a book. Let's go to our application and test it. First, let's create a new book. After operation, we can see a beautiful green alert with message of book created successfully, and we will be redirected to home page. No, let's edit a book and change it. And after operation, we can see a green alert with text of book edited successfully, and we will be redirected to home page. And finally, let's test delete book. Again, after operation, we must see green alert with text of book deleted successfully. And we must be redirected to home page. And now, our application has a better user experience. Well, this is the final lesson of our Bookstore Stack project. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if it was useful or not and comments. Have a good time and goodbye.